All right, so here's the uh, progress with the, uh, well, plumbing for coolant, for oil, and for fuel. Um, you can sort of see here that uh, things are getting tight. And I'll go through the systems here. So this is our, our uh, swirl pot, and this is the output from the engine. So it's this guy. This will bend down and connect here to the swirl pot. The swirl pot is under pressure. And then we have this uh, lower outlet, which is a uh, uh, kind of a, the steam line will connect to, which is this guy. Um, and then this comes from the radiator to uh, try and relieve any air pockets that are up front at the highest point in the radiator. And then this top line that doesn't have anything on it will loop back over to the other side, which this is temporarily mounted for now while I test fit and position everything. But it goes um, down to the bottom of this can, which is uh, uh, like an expansion tank. And then this line will relieve any water or overflow out of the expansion tank and then out to the ground. And then uh, down here, you can sort of see it. Uh, this is the uh, input, the uh, cold side from the radiator, and it's facing that direction because you can sort of see that gray bar down there. That is our oil to water heat exchanger. So the water comes uh, back from the radiator down here, this blue coupler through the exchanger and then does a 180 and then back into the motor there. See what I mean when it's getting tight? So that's our water lines. Our oil, so we have our oil tank. This is a dry sump engine. So we have our oil tank. This is our input into the oil tank, which if we follow this line, goes back on the firewall and connects to once again, the top of our uh, oil to water heat exchanger down there. Uh, the bottom of that is the output from the motor, which if I can get in here, you can see that blue line, or the fitting down there, right there, which if I can get it to focus on the right thing, that's close enough. So those two uh, ports down there, so one output goes through our oil to water heat exchanger down there and then into the top of the oil tank and you can't even see it but there's an output that runs next to the firewall across the firewall And then it's going to run down to the input uh, down here, and that's the input into the motor. So this is cooled, stored oil from the oil tank will go back down into the block there and then into the pump in the front of the motor. Now our fuel lines and our tank link and everything else, uh, you can barely see. Uh, a, because they're black, and B, because they're under everything else. So you can sort of see um, our tank link and our oil feed line. So the larger those two lines is a tank link which balances the two fuel tanks uh, because they're saddle tanks, one on either side of the car. The smaller line there, which is a dash eight, is our, our fuel feed line. So that connects to our pickup inside the tank and goes to a center point in the middle of the car. So that's also uh, on top of the tank link. So it's an additional link between the two tanks, which should help them balance. But that feeds the input for our, our fuel filter, which feeds our lift pump, which has to go somewhere down here. Uh, if I can move the AC line out of the way temporarily. Um, the header's not in place now, but the pipe, these two exhaust ports 
feed a header that comes around this side of this brace and then it goes through. So this area is filled with hot exhaust pipe, um, which makes putting anything down on the floor there is going to get pretty hot. So I'm reluctant to put the pump there and the filters there, but I don't really have many options um, just because I'm, I'm just out of space. So I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to put the lift pump and one filter on, on this side of the engine. Um, maybe it, it's with the oil tank and the alternator right there, it's, it's just getting too tight. So I may have to put all three pieces just right down in here. So that'll be our, our low pressure filter, our lift pump, our high pressure filter, and then that's gonna feed uh, this uh, sump tank, and there's a high pressure pump in here, which feeds the regulator, the regulator feeds the fuel rail, and then there's a return line at the bottom of the regulator, which will go back down and then split up and then feed the right tank and the left tank. So I'm gonna pull from both tanks and then return to both tanks and to, to make sure that I've got um, just the maximum draw from both tanks to, to pull down as much fuel as possible, um, I picked up uh, the Holly Hydromat and it makes kind of a cross shape in the bottom of the tank, uh, which should be able to draw from the corners and pull every last bit of fuel out of both tanks. And the fact that it's, uh, it kind of closes up as fuel, um, isn't found in certain areas uh, hopefully means that I can draw from both tanks down to the last uh, gallon or two gallons. Um, there isn't much capacity between the two tanks. Um, I think I'm somewhere around uh, 22 gallons total but as far as usable space I, I think that's maybe only 21 or, or 20 gallons which is about the size of fuel tank and uh, uh, the newer McLarens and uh, they have to stop for fuel fairly quickly and often. So I'm hoping for a slightly better mileage or at least range anyway. Um, here is our uh, what I'm talking about. So our pre-filter, our lift pump, and then a high pressure filter. So this is a 100 micron filter, uh, 044 motorsport pump, and this is a 10 micron high pressure filter. Um, these are both from Aeromotive. The casing is the same, it's just the filter inside that has a tighter orifice on this guy than on this guy. Um, this is part of our return line setup. So up here on this Y, there is one of these lines will come down from the regulator. And then the other side, if we look here at the sump tank, um, this will be constantly overflowing with fuel thanks to the lift pump. Um, that's just the function of the, the fuel pumps is when it's, when there's no pressure, it has higher flow, higher pressure equals less flow. Um, that's just the nature of the beast. So this line, which will be overflow from the sump tank will return back down to, uh, the fuel tanks via uh, this guy here. So we have two dash six lines into a dash eight, and then it'll be a dash eight line that goes down to this uh, Y, and then it breaks back out into dash sixes again for the left and the right tanks. Um, and I'm hoping that it's gonna be sufficient flow for all of the system needs between what's coming back from the regulator, what's overflow from the sump tank, and it'll keep fuel temperatures down and uh, uh, cycle fuel back to the tanks where it can cool off a bit more. That's the hope anyway. So this is a uh, uh, fuel system that uh, I've designed. It's not the factory setup. Uh, I thought I'd mention that. We have some of the factory bits in here and I just wasn't happy with how the, uh, the factory uh, manage the fuel system for these motors. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit later um, when I talk about the fuel system more. But for
for now, that's kind of what I'm working on, or what I've been working on, and uh, it's it's coming together. The uh, once I'm done putting holes in the bulkhead here for all of our mounts and whatnot. Um, again, this is temporarily mounted with tape. I need to drill the holes for all these guys. The other side is finally done. And then all of this stuff has to come out of the car. I have to pull the engine, have to pull everything off the bulkhead, pull the bulkhead, um, and then pull the center tub one more time. And, um, and then we can prepare uh, everything for its final installation. So we're gonna do the dash on the center tub. We're gonna do maybe the uh, A pillars and the ceiling and get those upholstered. Um, I still have to mount the fire bottle, which I've moved from down here at the footwell to down here behind the passenger seat. Um, a, because it fits and B, it gives the passengers a little more leg room. Um, I jumped in the passenger seat and you know it makes for a pretty rough and tight ride and in fact um, for my taller passengers I may even um, ditch the uh, uh, the passenger side foot brace uh, just because if if you're about six foot it's fine to have in there but anyone over six foot there's no way you're gonna fit um, your knees will be up in the dash, your feet will be uncomfortably angled on the plate, and you'll have to duck down in the seat, and your head still may hit the bars. So uh, without the plate in place, uh, someone over six feet can can put their feet all the way back in the footwell and slouch in the seat, and they still may have better luck clearing these bars. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go, just so that I can have uh, more opportunities for more passengers because that's the whole point of this car is I want to share it with people, not just short people. <laughs>